Hi, I'm Fred Goss, and this is Dr. Elizabeth Miller. Welcome to another episode of An Outsider's Guide to Northwest Arkansas. In this episode, I lost my gallbladder. So I'm a little fragile, but she, but the doctor was really there for me. You know, we're very codependent. Just the idea of like being at home and you weren't in. It's weird that there's like a cross behind you as you're talking about my, my, my impending doom. This happened right before Easter. Fred's very Christ like. Stop. What I love is that she. Keep this guy healthy. She's gotten so production savvy having making, mm -hmm. making our series that. I, she is able to repeat that line she just started with, huh. knowing that she, I probably missed it as I was turning the camera around, right? So she's getting very, she's, she's, she's got EP quality, EP, mm -hmm. EP. Detail oriented. She's, yes, detail oriented. And then. I'm just glad he's home. Now we just have to keep an eye if there's any complication to run a fever. Vomiting blood. Vomit, then we just go. We go back. Or when I do poo, if all of a sudden you just hear. <gasps> but seriously, I thought I was dying. <clears throat> you were. You had organ failure. Like when that thing was done, it had to come out. It was done and had to come out. But Look, there's a big ladder. Let's make sure we get some B-roll of that. <laughs> Maybe she shouldn't be a producer. <laughs> it's windy. It's a green ladder. Oh, it is a green ladder. Let's oh, see. I'm the asshole. Ladder. She should be an EP because you know, so she made me get the shot. It is a nice green ladder. I like the color. Yeah. And it's a big ladder. Oh, yeah. Big ladders are expensive. Guts, I went in leading with that. I'm like, I don't know what's wrong. I might be having a massive heart attack. My chest, my whole abdomen was inflamed. And that's all I knew is it, it, was, it hurt in a way that I've never felt pain. Right? I take some footage of those flowers. <laughs> Oh my God, I'm trying to tell the story and the executive, I dubbed her the executive producer and I'm never going to hear the end of this. Wait, I got to get the flowers. And they just, uh, I guess they were just like, man, this old coot wearing his Oberlin hoodie, he must be looking for drugs, <laughs> which, which means that they, think, they must think everybody's looking for drugs. Like that's just their go-to. And that's at that point, they've lost their way in the ER. You know who the true hero of the day is? Her aunt, her lovely aunt, who's also a nurse and kind of cute. No, I'm, I'm just kidding. Very cute and a wonderful woman. The thing is, she's as beautiful on the inside as she is on the end. And she took the time to- My aunt? Yeah. <laughs> she is. She is. And she took the time to uh, be concerned about it. She said, you need to go back because you've got no answers and there's obviously something very wrong. So I, we went back much as I never wanted to go back to that place again, because they released me. The guy just came and went, your chest is fine. We're releasing you. I'm like, oh, okay. Well, so it's not the chest. What is it? They, could, they must have been able to hear me in there sobbing. I was, I was laying in there crying? shaking and crying the whole time. Yeah. Well, the man doesn't want to, you know. You, you should have told me you were crying. It's emasculating. Like, I'm worried about it being emasculated wearing these stupid pants. I want you to get some footage of these dog woods. All right. On the night shift, I came back and went, I was here all day. I'm still in the same amount of pain. No answers. And they're like, come in, come in. After another five hours, of it, they, they, because they basically went, got, did a CT scan, looked at all my innards. Oh, the gallbladder looks a little enlarged. So then they just got the ultrasound wand out and started looking at all and the stomach and the kidneys and just and then they then when they got to the gallbladder they're like aha uh -huh. <laughs> I think we found the culprit so of course she comes in and she goes that thing's got to go immediately and and I was like what like like I wasn't expecting major surgery like I, I didn't I thought I was going to die but I didn't think I have to go through surgery I've only had one surgery before in my entire life I was eight years old and had my tonsils out so I've had a lucky run Especially when you consider how many bones I've broken, but nothing operatable like ribs, you know, weird, my weird finger, this weird finger will never be right. Yet these guys are all in a group and this guy's like, what am I doing here? Then I had the surgery. I got this awful food from the cafeteria. At least it was cheap. Um, chicken, Parmesan and vegetables. Sorry, your lunch was bad <laughs> while I was under the knife. I was eating it and the surgeon came out to talk to this family of someone who must have had some kind of testicle or colon cancer. 
And he was like talking all about this testicle. And I just was like, I can't eat anymore. At least you didn't ruin it. the most perfect lunch by just like, you know, busting out information on this guy's testicle. I mean, it was like pretty graphic. I, I kind of blocked it out. <laughs> I don't know. It's just like I, I couldn't. I feel bad. Like I can't eat when one of those dog, Melissa Etheridge dog. I no, was, Sarah McLaughlin. Sarah, whatever. We almost missed a perfectly good bit because these people walk behind us. She's like, turn the camera off because you're not in Los Angeles. That we don't, they don't, she doesn't want people to see us for what we really are, which was what? Thirsty clout chasers. Thirsty clout chasers. <laughs> so I just wanted to say, hey, that's a civil war wall. You know, my usual thing and her, her to go. No. <laughs> no, it's not. No. It's not. We've already been, would have already rotted away. Yeah. She didn't want judgment from the people walking on the loop. <laughs> which. I guy looks like Jeff Bezos. This is, yeah. No. He which is not a compliment. He didn't look as stupid as Jeff Bezos. Whenever I think of Jeff Bezos now, I picture him in that flak suit going with that stupid cowboy hat going to space for two fucking minutes. And it cost him seven billion dollars. <sighs> Feed the poor. You're a grown-up nerd. You know, just feed feed the world for a year. It would cost you less than it cost you going to space the couple times you did your little space bounce with Captain Kirk. <laughs> so important. Feed the hungry. Stop being a goddamn grown-up nerd.